Thursday. Hello, Facebook. It's Thursday. It's Just Do It with Linda and Stephen. Hello, Linda. Good morning uh, in, in San Diego. How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. It's been a beautiful day, and I hope you have up to the same. We're basking in sunshine at the moment, and, uh, well, all is well. And with you? Yes. Um, I woke up late this morning. I attended a red carpet event last night, which is absolutely awesome. And I got in at about 2.30. So ah. I just recently woke up. So I don't even know what it looks like outside yet. I'll check after we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Right. Okay. Now, we sent out invitations to people to join us on ManyChat. Uh, 145 people invited. And awesome. probably, take a, probably take a few minutes for, uh, for people to arrive. Um, what I'm hoping for is that people come along and tell their stories and we'll see oh, if we can help awesome. them and uh, how, how they can help us too. So hello to everybody who's watching. If you are watching, could you please say hello? Please say hello and where you're from. Oh, I see yeah. that Steve, Stephen Healy is watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the me. That's, uh, hang on. Let me close that down because it's using computer power. So, right. Okay. So that's. The view account should go down by one in a minute. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, right. it's all I'm, good. I'm just closing everything down. This is unusual because I'm not normally sat on this side of the screen, and there's nothing. I hear there's, you. Nothing, there's nothing to do. I know it's it's really weird because I, um, you know, being on the co-host with you is the same situation for me as I'm not usually on the other side. So like. There's just nothing going on over there. I don't even know what to do, what to say. I I, I can't click anything. You know, there's nothing to do. It's kind of crazy. Hey, I uh, was wondering, do you know, because I, I had this thought, you know, this morning as I was yep. getting ready, um, since you're like the Be Live guru, do you have any idea? Will they Are they eventually going to work on where we can do a share screen? We can have our guests share the screen. I, I never get to know I get to know about what's happening the day before it's released so okay well okay all I can say is nothing's happening tomorrow um okay. we'll have our fingers crossed on that one so we have yeah, I mean, uh, Bree Bree here from San Francisco good morning Bree good morning hey we should drop the um because you want to have guests come on we should drop the link down there right. if, to if people, join us uh we've got a bot as well so if people type guest in the comments, okay, then they'll get an invitation to join us on screen. Okay, I'll let me put that up there. Okay, now basically that that's that side is automated, so that you, because the problem on Facebook is that if you're watching live, you only see the last five comments. So, you if you if you post a link, the link disappears. So say hello to Jason. Um, the link disappears. Hi, whereas, if if you can type guest, then um, or if if people watching type guest, they can join us on camera. It's automated by a ManyChat messenger bot, and um, they get a message saying hello, and can you confirm who you are? And once you confirm who you are, they get the link that you've just pasted. So it's the Fantastic. same information, but it all goes through Messenger, and it means it's automatic. So, uh, okay, and I put that up on the screen. Type guest to join us live. So, if you're interested in joining us live, um, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and type replay in the comments below. We'd love to know who's joining us on the replay as well as on the live. So, thank you guys for joining us. And uh, the show is called Just Do It. Like, first of all, hey, why don't we just talk about why we decided to call it Just Do It? You start off, Stephen. <laughs> I, I see you're in charge, you're throwing the questions and. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you feel now. <laughs> right. I, I think that the problem that we all have is that we make a to-do list and uh, we start the to-do list with the best will in the world and the best mood in the world and we never actually finish it. And the just do it side of it from my point of view is if you've got an idea, just run with it, just go with it, do it, do it now. Don't put it off. Yeah. Now yes. I've got, I'm going to, talk a bit about my procrastination because I downloaded uh, your PDF last week. Okay. And I've read it twice. I know what I have to do uh, in order to, well, do you want to explain about that? And then we can take it from there. Oh, is that about the, the time, time management document? It is, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't know if I have this in that document coming to think about it, as you were talking about the to-do list is I've also uh, realized that we have to have a to-don't list at all I mean, as well. I don't know if I have that in my document because I came up with that recently, but um, a to-don't list is important because how often do you find yourself doing things you really shouldn't be doing because either you don't know how, you don't like to do it, um, it frustrates you, it causes you aggravation, like any of those emotions that are negative emotions should really be on your to don't list. But you're like, but I don't, I can't, I ha I don't have anybody else who can do it, can do it for me. Well, really you can delegate so many things to other people. There are so many projects, tasks, and things that we are not the absolute person, the ultimate person that has to do it. If it's not getting done, it's, it's automatically on your to don't list because you're not doing it anyway. So it's time to delegate out. You know, I created a, a document and it's a, a time management document for learning how to time block. And it takes you through some really great um, uh, lessons and a pro, what do you call it? Pro, what's, what do you call it? The, I can't even think of the word right now, but the, the process of yep. discovering how much time you actually really spend on the things that you're doing. And it's, it's a, like, it really helps you keep in check. Now, what I discovered, Stephen, is when I started the process, I, what you do first, I'll just tell you really quickly, the first thing you do is you make a list of all the things you do in a day. And then you estimate how much time it takes you to do those items. So I made my list. I was all excited. I made my list and it was kind of like estimating for every day that had passed, you know, like maybe the last couple of days. And then I wrote in my estimates of how much time I thought it took me to do those particular tasks. Well, I found out that I was spending 36 hours a day, you know, mm -hmm. doing stuff. Okay. There's no such thing as 36 hours in a day, you know, when you're doing it, doing the things yourself. And so I had to do the next part of the process, which is actually tracking for one week, every single thing you do. So when you do it, you write down the start time, you write down the end time, and then you can see how much time it really takes you to do it. That's the only way you can see what you're really doing with your time. And then from there, you realize how much time you're spending on certain things, maybe some things you overestimate and some things you underestimate, which is what I obviously did ending up with 36 hours of work in a day, you know, but it's a great process because it helps you to check in and say, you know what, this is something I shouldn't be doing. This is something I should be delegating to somebody else. I really need to hire somebody to do all my messenger bots because it takes more time than I thought. I need to hire somebody to do my social media because I found myself spending five and six hours a day on social media. There's other things that can be better used of my time. So this time blocking document really helps you to you know, narrow down on, on what it is you're spending your time on. And what I'll do is I'll drop a link below to that document and it's uh, just, you know, livinglive.tv slash time blocking. And I'll drop that in the comments. Now, again, if anybody wants to join us live, go ahead and type the word guest below. You'll pop up in this live stream and then we'll bring you up on board. And then you can join us when you're talking about, we don't even know what we're going to talk about. You know, it's like just talking about just doing it, whatever it is, you know. That's true. I mean, just going back to the time blocking for a moment, you also categorize your activities, don't you? So that. Yes. You yeah and then you compare the what you think you're doing with what you're actually doing and uh you get a fright um because what you think you're doing and what you're actually doing could be two quite different things oh yeah especially, especially <laughs> if you get sidetracked yeah um, yeah do you ever get sidetracked uh, do i ever not get sidetracked that would be, <laughs> that would be better question just, yeah that's that's the question because we we are on the internet and my business is on the internet but uh the situation is that you find yourself doing things you start off with a plan for the day as i said and you go through that plan but you interrupt yourself yes that's, that's the thing you in, it's not anybody else inter it doesn't take somebody else to interrupt you you're <laughs> right. careful of doing that yourself squirrel I mean, right <laughs> <laughs> exactly so and before you know it you're off on a sidetrack and an enjoyable sidetrack because you wouldn't be doing it otherwise um right and you've lost time and that's a great point right there you know actually one of my mentors his name is chris duncan and he's actually in new zealand and he um he says the first three hours of your day are the only hours that you have is your time that's if you wake up early enough okay so 
so he has this morning ritual that he goes through and the morning ritual starts at 4 a.m. He gets up at 4 a.m. Mm. Those first, yeah, I don't do that. But uh, you know, the, those first three hours from 4 to 7 a.m., he's devoted to him and his business and doing what he wants to do. Because starting at about 7 a.m. is when people start interrupting. People start wanting your time. And the rest of your day, we find that a lot of times what happens is the rest of our day, we're answering other people's emails. We're responding to other people's social media posts. We're doing things for other people. And you know, whether it's phone calls or what have you, but we're spending the rest of our day for others. So if we can devote that first three hours of our day to just us and block that out for us to do what we need and want to do, we can accomplish yeah. so much more. So you, you've been taking three hours at the beginning of the day, you're getting up earlier. What happens at the end of the day? Do you find yourself going to bed early? Because you've all got to sleep. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know. Um, well, I, you know, I tried doing Chris's thing. I, I just, I'm a nighttime person. So I'm, you know, how many of you out there are a night owl and how many of you are morning people? Yeah, I'm a night owl too, Stephen. So, you know, to, um, to do that process for me makes it, I tried it. I tried it for three weeks and right. I found myself, uh, okay, if I get to bed by midnight and get up at four, at least that's still four hours of sleep. It wasn't enough. I need a, I'm a person who needs six to seven hours of sleep. Like I figured out my sleep time that I actually need. And so I found myself, you know, just not waking up at four and then I'd wake up at six or seven. And then, yeah, so it's just kind of crazy, yeah. you know, so you have to find what works for you. I truly believe that, um, my belief is that, you know, we need to find out what our circadian rhythm is. And for me, it just happens to be nighttime. I, have been a nighttime person since I was a kid. I mean, gosh, I would stay up till one or two in the morning when I was in high school. I got my homework done starting at 11 o'clock at night. And yep. I did yep. really well. Like my, I just like lock in at nighttime and I'm super hyper focused at night. So that's just my time. And, and uh, you know, I think some experts would disagree with me and that's okay because I've figured out what works for me. Well, that's that's the key. That's what it's finding your own way, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you can you you can research, you can find out what other people do, but when you come to actually build your own model, it's one that suits you. Exactly, but you got to figure it out. You know, you have to spend that time, like actually thinking. You can't just say, "I think this is it," but you know, you have to like really, really check in with your body, check in with you know how things are operating at certain times of day for you, and and really, really look at yourself to see when am I the most tired? When am I the most wide awake? When am I the most focused? When am I the least focused? I'll tell you what, 3 p.m. every day, it's a day that I crave chocolate. <laughs> you know, I figured it out. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, that, that's why I enjoy doing shows at uh, sort of 3 p.m., 5 p.m. Um, because it's, you're in the right mood to do that. You've done all the work you had to do. Right. And you can concentrate on on being on the show, running the show, being co-host. Um, and also, it's, it's at a time when people are actually around to watch. Uh, shout out to everybody who's watching now. Uh, yeah, so we have um, Barb says she's a night owl. And then Erin, see, totally on the opposite spectrum. She's a morning person. And then we have Philip joining us and Fernando joining us. Thank you guys so much. And we have RJ and Rebecca, and as well as, I, I'm sorry, Franco, Franco is who? What's the name again? Jason. Jason, and Jason joining us. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Okay, Barb says that from 3 to 5 p.m. is hubby time. Well, that's good. See, she mm -hmm. has figured out the time of day that's best for her to spend with her, her husband, which is awesome, because I don't know about you. It's like my husband, my poor husband, like he's um, got to fit in when I fit him in because I haven't created hubby time. So I want to thank you so much, Barb, for giving me that idea of like actually creating that and making it happen. And my dogs love it too. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> is, we are live. And it's basically, uh, I mean, in our situation, we sort of both finish around about seven o'clock in the evening and then the rest of the evening. Um, and that's that's the way that that works for us but it's different for everybody and that's the beauty of it you actually mm -hmm. put together your own way of actually doing things and getting things done 
Yeah. And you know, you know, it's interesting because you guys both end at seven, which is cool. Um, my husband is a morning person and I'm a right. night person. So it does make, you know, for the scheduling, trying to figure it out. So sometimes he'll say, Hey, let's watch a movie tonight. You know, starting at eight o'clock. I'm like, okay, I'll take a break at 8 PM. <laughs> you know, I'll watch a movie right. for two hours and then I'll come back because about 11 PM is when my focus time actually really kicks in. So it's just figuring out what works for the for the two of us, right? Oh yeah, that's that's totally totally agree. And uh, say so hello to Brigetti. And hi, Brigetti. If we're actually on ten page different pages today, so oh if, wow! If you are if you are not watching on the Be Live in Five page, at the top of the post you'll find a link. Click that link, and you'll be able to comment live and. Linda will see it and will feature your comment on screen. If you're anywhere else but Be Live in Five, we'll see your comments, but after the show. So um, thank you for watching, wherever you're watching. And we know we've got viewers in Canada and England and the East Coast, the West Coast, and everywhere in between. Yay! And, uh, it's great that everybody's actually here. Now, what I, I did, um, as I said earlier today, I had this idea and I thought I'll go with it. I recorded the 40 second uh, audio, uh, which okay. just said thank you to everybody who supports Be Live in Five and the live video hub. And uh, if you want to join Linda and I as a guest on the show today, we're more than happy for you to come on board. Yes. And I, I put that audio into the uh, message that was broadcast at um, 11 minutes before the show. And it's had a good reception. So I would say thank you to Cheryl if Cheryl's watching. Because cool. people, so, people got this message in Messenger, which said that you and I are live at 12 p.m. Eastern, but attached to the bottom of that was a, a short audio. Okay. Uh, which, which said, um, just thank you. Because I think it, can, it matters. When people come and watch the show, it, it's difficult to reach out on an individual basis when a lot of people watch. But what you do want to do is to actually make contact. And that audio is made for a conversation. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I love that idea. I haven't done anything like that. I haven't done any videos, which is crazy because I've done a lot of videos, but I haven't on my mini chat. I haven't done any videos or audio. I love that idea. And um, are you able to are you able to yet, Stephen, because I know you've been checking this out. Are you yeah. able to, to run your commercial while you're doing your be live? No, not yet. No, not yet. OK, not yet. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm getting close. I had a word with Tom last week and I did promise to bring it today. But I, instead of bringing the video, I brought myself, which is perhaps an achievement in itself because uh, we actually started the show on time. Uh, but I'm getting I'm getting a lot closer and hopefully soon we will have that. Very That's soon. exciting. And then you'll do a tutorial showing people how to do it and everything. Oh, yeah. 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 Fantastic. The, the, the idea is there. It's just not. It's got to be simple and straightforward to do uh, because if 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 you want to play a live video on your uh, be live TV shows, then there are things extra that you need to do. And what I want to do is to refine those to the point where I know that if you do it, it's going to work. Yeah. So I'm trying to get a situation where it will work every time. At the okay. moment, it, at the moment, it works most of the time. Okay. Which, which is not good enough, really, because if you're going to actually recommend something, then it's, it's got to work. So I am still yeah. working on that. So watch out for it. Watch out. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it because um, I I know that you can do it with some other platforms, but I really love Be Live. I love this platform. I love being able to pop the you know things up on the screen, pop the people up on the screen, and then you know, I know we can share our own desktop. I'm looking forward to you know someday. I'm sure they're working working on where you can have your guests share their desktop. Yeah. I'm sure they're working on that, and then also being able to you know share pictures and share video, but being consistent and and being able to hear the hear the video and, and see it. Is I'm excited yeah. to see what you're working on, and we once you get it locked on, like this is consistent, this is amazing. Now it's time to share with everybody. I can't wait to see what that is. I'll continue my research. And I shall be back next Thursday, and we'll have a live video in the show, one way or another. Okay, yeah. yay! <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. So, what do you of, plan for the weekend? Uh, for the weekend, I'm actually going to visit family. I'm uh, okay. I'm off tomorrow. Brigetti's running the show tomorrow. And then I'm off for four days. So I don't have internet for four days. 
Oh, which, wow. Which is a good thing, I think. I hope, well, <laughs> I'll find out. The only way to find out is to actually do it. So I've got my mobile phone, but I'm planning not to use that other than for phone calls. Uh, so I will be okay. off the grid, off the internet grid, as it were. For, for four days I'll okay. let you know, let you know how I get on on that one too um, yeah and I was wondering like how uh, when's the last time you were off the grid was it the last time there was uh, internet <laughs> <laughs> before internet <laughs> oh now that's a, that's an excellent question the last time I was off the internet was uh, when we went to Germany last year um, oh, okay be because we've got horrendous roaming charges uh, for traveling <laughs> across Europe. Uh, so actually to, to get an, uh, an internet signal uh, can be costly. So I just said, right, okay, we'll leave in England. I'll switch the internet back on when we get back to England. So we went over to Germany and that worked out quite well. Um, but that was, that was over the Christmas period and you've always got lots to do over the Christmas period. What's um, it like over there during Christmas time? Oh, Germany. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. I mean, we have our version of German Christmas markets but there is nothing like the real thing uh, i mean if you go to even the small towns uh, have got their own uh, christmas fairs which run for for a week or so and you can go around and you can sample the local produce food beer wine and everything that's manufactured by craftspeople locally is on show and it's just it's just a delight i mean we've got copies of it in the uk every year there's a, a market in salisbury and mm -hmm. um, that runs for about 10 days and everybody goes there. But it's it, G German Christmas markets is something special. Do you have them in your area? I have not That's seen such. German one. We do have this uh, interesting, uh, there's this uh, place called Balboa Park, which we had our world fair there in the like late 1800s, I believe, or early 1900s. And they have this one area there is called like, the International Houses. So that would be yes. the closest thing. So it's just like one little house. That's the house of Germany. You know, that would yep. be it. But we don't have um, like a German town. Like we have um, Little Italy. And then mm -hmm. we have, actually, that's all we really have come to think of it is that's actually internationally based on one country is little yeah. Italy. Yeah. So we don't have anything like that. That's really cool. You have, so at least you have something you could take you over there. I, we've got everything over here uh, at the moment, even, even the good weather, which uh, is, <laughs> is a blessing. Now, something that I've got interested in recently and just doing it rather than thinking about it is podcasting. Ooh, uh, now, the, the, thing, the thing that drew me in quite simply was that with Anchor FM, uh, which is free, you can now okay. broadcast from your desktop. Before that, Anchor FM was mobile. And oh. obviously, I, I, don't, I, couldn't, I don't do it mobile. I know you do it successfully, but I don't. I'm a desktop person. Um, okay. And I, I wanted to do it from desktop, but now you can. You can go to anchor.fm and you can record directly on your desktop using the same setup as you've got for BeLive.tv. Um, but, of course, you don't need the camera unless, and this is what I did this week. This is my just do it and, and improve it. What I did was to set it up so that I could record the video on my local hard drive at the same time as I was talking to Anchor. So at the end of it, I had the podcast on Anchor and then the video of me talking made at the same time, then went up on YouTube. Yeah. So you didn't pre-record, you you did the video, but you didn't have to pre-record the audio. You were able to go live on the audio, and then when you were done, it then pushed out live? Uh, basically, oh. basically <laughs> I, 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 was, I was multitasking. I was on the anchor screen, and I pressed start, and I was on the recording software, and I pressed record. So as Angelica pointed out, my partner pointed out, there was a slight delay <laughs> Whilst, okay. I'm pressing, whilst I'm pressing the buttons. But it did, did mean that I got a video and an audio at the same time. Okay. Um, and then were you, okay, so now you have your audio on anchor.fm. Yeah. And are you able to add the, the bumpers, the beginning and ending audio to it? Oh, you, you can edit the audio, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So you don't have to use some other platform first 
And then wait, now is anchor F anchor.fm. Is that the actual hosting for the podcast? It is. Yeah. Basically wow. it, the, the podcast is hosted there. It is free and they then syndicate it out. And it's the only way that I could ever think of of being on iTunes. Yeah. Because the podcast, the last six episodes of the podcast are now on iTunes. And I haven't okay. done a thing. I haven't done a thing other than say, oh, please, please put me on iTunes. So when I record, <laughs> I record on a Monday. I did Monday's recording. By Tuesday, I was on six different sites with the recording, and I found that two thirds of the people watch on Anchor F or listen on Anchor FM, and a third don't. So okay. it means it means that it's getting a greater reach than it would do. I right? I'd recommend anybody to get into podcasting if we can do this live video. Mm -hmm. Audio is a breeze. It really is because you can just sit down. I just get a piece of paper. I write down three or four topics, and then I go live, do the introduction, say hello, and then I talk about the four topics. That's it. End of. That and it, it it runs as long as I'm talking. So it can be four minutes. It can be six minutes. Um, but it's just keeping people up to date with what's going on. That's fantastic. I do have a podcast and I haven't pushed it out yet because um, it was recommended by, uh, I don't know if you've heard of him, John Lee Dumas. He's mm -hmm. um, done like a daily podcast for years, but he recommended that, that I have eight interviews all done. Mm -hmm. And then I push out three the first day and then push out one each week after that and then yeah. just keep ahead of it. And so I've only done four interviews so far, but my podcast is called The Fearless Entrepreneurs. So if yeah. you're interested, you know, anybody who's an entrepreneur, I believe that all entrepreneurs are fearless because we take that leap of faith and we we put ourselves out there and we do what it is that you know we want to do. And so if you're interested in being interviewed on my podcast, go ahead and type the fearless entrepreneurs in the comments below and I'll reach out to you. The messenger bot isn't set up for that. You know, so I'll reach out to you privately. And get you on my, you know, get you queued up to be one of the interviewees, so I can get you out on my podcast once I push it out there. But I'm glad to hear this about Anchor FM because, you know, I'm like, I'm at that sp that point right now. I'm just like, just get the interviews done because yeah. that's my my just do it is just get those eight interviews done. So then I can do that next step, whatever that step is. I don't know what it is. So now I know. <laughs> so thank you so much. Well, the, the sharing ideas. Uh, is is the most one of the best benefits of, of live video because we did the show yesterday, RJ and I, and during the course of the show, four or five ideas came up mm -hmm. from people who are watching the show, and it's just magical because then you can, uh, as we did, we uh, or RJ set it up, we run off to Trello, and we've got all the ideas listed there. Now all we have to do is just, just do it. <laughs> Now, Barb says that um, Anchor FM has a Facebook page, so we should check that out. Cool. Thank you so much. As I'm sure you can find a lot of information and you're exchanging ideas. And yet if you're having bumps and bruises along the way, you can ask, like, how do I? How do I fix this? How do I fix that? And you, RJ says you Anchor FM is amazing or outstanding. And um, Barb has yet to use it. But, um, yeah, check it out, Barb. Just do it. It's time. It's time. What are we waiting for, right? Like, I'm waiting to get those interviews done. But... Why haven't I done enough of them yet? I mean, it's been about a month since I started. And you know, it's so, so cool is I actually had an opportunity to interview John Lee Dumas. He was my very first podcast interview. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. And I'll I just really quickly share that. That also was another one of those just do it stories is I was attending an event called Social Media Marketing World. It, it takes place here in San Diego. People come in all up from all over the world. We had uh, like about 3,500 people in attendance this year. And John Lee Dumas was one of the speakers. Well, my I volunteered for the event because I love volunteering. You know, how many of you guys love volunteering? I I absolutely love it because I get to meet so many great people when I volunteer and, and I get to you know, help. And so I was volunteering for the event and my job as a volunteer was a speaker handler, um, speaker wrangler is what I like to call them. But um, I, so I had, I had been assigned to, I don't know, about 30 different speakers. These were my speakers. My job was to make sure they got to their, their location on time. Like that was my whole job. So John Lee Dumas happened to be one of my speakers. And so I decided that you know, I was going to make sure I 
really connected with every single speaker that was my speaker and I was going to set up interviews with them. And so I walked up to John Lee Dumas and I said, Hey, I'm your speaker, you know, Wrangler and stuff. And, and I said, I'd love to interview you on my podcast, the fearless entrepreneurs. And here's what he said. And I was so glad I had asked because what he said is I always say yes to everybody who asks me in person. And I, I thought about it because there were about 200 people in that audience listening to him speak mm -hmm. and none of them asked him for that. So here I had this opportunity and I took it and I just, I just took it. And I said, I'm glad I did because he actually followed through mm -hmm. and you know he was interviewed on my podcast. So he will be my first release when I get my eight, you know, in line. And, and I have some really amazing people that are that are going to be on my podcast. And I'm really excited to push it out there and and share with people all these things about you know fearless entrepreneurs being fearless in the you know in the face of um, these different fears that we experience on a semi semi regular basis as an entrepreneur. And um, well, let me ask you: Did you have any fears? You know, when you finally decide, you know, I'm just going to do this podcast thing. Did you have any fears related to it? And if so, what were they? And how did you break through them? I, I think that the, the, the only fear I had is what I'm going to talk about because I don't want to be talking about things I actually talk about on live video because you may as well okay. watch the video because you can actually see and as well as hear me. So on the live video, what the, the, I decided that I would do a, a mix of the majority of the content would be about me, okay, and about the things that I do, about the things that people I know do. Mm -hmm. So it's more a commentary than it is um, sort of, interactive training is which what i enjoy doing most um so getting that list together getting the, the the idea of how it could be done so now i can come on a monday and monday afternoon i can sit down i can say all right what happened over the weekend i want to talk about so i'd write that down and then what's going to happen this week i can write that down as well and then is there anything particular i want to talk about and i can add a couple of topics in so at the end of it i've got a list of about six or seven things i'm going to talk about and Basically, I start at the beginning with the intro and then I just run through the six things. The beautiful thing is uh, that you know what you're going to say, okay? Because when you actually have the idea and you write it down, you're reminding yourself what actually happened, yeah? So when mm -hmm. you're talking about it, the, the memory of it is fresh. So you don't run out of words. You can go from one topic to the next topic. Uh, and it's just it's pleasant to do it. I wouldn't... I wouldn't even commit myself to a daily podcast, but a weekly podcast yeah. is absolutely brilliant. And and to, to to say that you're on iTunes, just to say it, never mind uh, whether you, anybody watches or listens there. Right. Just good. Uh, as seen as seen on iTunes. So that's my byline. That's a that's a great um, point there because a perception, right? If you um, if you are on iTunes, whether you have any listeners or not, that's it's a great point to point that out because people have perception of us based on what they see that we're doing. And uh, I found, I don't know, have you found this Steven by doing so many uh, live videos, you I'll go to an, an event and people will say, Oh, I know you, I've seen you on. And um, they, they elevate me. I don't want to say like me emotionally, like they have actually elevated me, but they put me up higher on this level that, that I'm, I'm just like, I'm just Linda, you know, <laughs> it's like, like, it's no big deal. I just happen to be a person who does a lot of videos, but mine is because, you know, I was challenged to do a video every day. And so I've been doing them every day. And because of that is uh, it kind of it's just put my name out there because of it, I, but I'm still just me, you know? I, 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 I see where you, where you, yeah. I mean, basically when we're, when we are, doing shows like this, then people see a great deal of us because they see who we are, we, they see our mannerisms, they see whether, you know, whether we're smiling or not, whether we're serious or not. Um, whereas in uh, taking it off onto uh, the, the podcast side, you can actually be more personal, yeah? Because you're not, potentially, we've got a bigger audience on here than we have on iTunes. So I know mm -hmm. that my podcast audience is, is people who want to get to know me better rather than people who want to know about live video. And two good things. I'm not again saying anybody who's watching now, uh, but it, you can be slightly more open on uh, audio, I found. 
Does that make sense? On audio? Well, and on, well, uh, yeah. Or on video, doing the video? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree because I feel, um, I feel in more of a connection, I think, because it's live. And, and that's something we're going to talk about camera confidence uh, in August. I know that uh, you and I will be talking about camera confidence. And I'm excited to talk about that because I literally was a person that was a back of the rumor. I never raised my hand. I never wanted to say anything. And for me to be here, you know, doing so many videos and having the confidence to just come on and, and do and speak and whatever. And then to then go to being on the red carpet interviewing stars. I actually, yesterday I was, I was like, Oh my God, I'm actually interviewing Randy Jackson, the one of the judges on American Idol. I interviewed him last night on the red carpet and that would not have happened had it not been for the confidence I gained through this whole process of you know being on camera. So I have no idea what my future holds and what that's going to look like, but I do know that I'm having a blast. <laughs> I know that much. <laughs> it's brilliant. Fun. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean the the, the thing is what in uh, live video and in networking, what you're trying to do and what your aim should be is not to go out and sell to people mm -mm. and say, but buy my latest book, buy my latest course. What you actually want to do is to get a situation where people do know, like, and trust you. And yeah. it, that, that respect, that level of respect is hard earned over a period of time. I mean, you, you get a situation where people come along, they do a live video and nothing happens. All right, they've just done the live video, but the thing that they've not done is the spade work to actually move it forward because it's not the first video that counts. It could be the 10th or the 50th. You've mm -hmm. got to be consistent and keep going, and you've got to consistently get the message out and help people. Um, so the, the, it's not an – I mean, you, you talk about going on the red carpet, but to get there, it's been a journey, hasn't it? Oh, boy, has it. And, you know, there's um, actually a video out there. I've been – a lot of people have been sending this video to me. I think it's because they're they're watching my journey. But uh, I'll share the, – the video is Les Brown, you know, international mm -hmm. motivational speaker. And Les Brown talks about the Chinese bamboo tree, how it takes five years of watering and taking care – Taking, uh, really, really taking care of this bamboo tree before it actually sprouts. And once it sprouts, it takes it five weeks. Shoot, I can't remember. It's five, it's five days or five weeks to grow to 90 feet tall. So it's right. five years, five years of working, you know, doing the groundwork, laying out that groundwork. And not that it's going to take each of us five years, you know, not that it's going to take us one year. You know, we don't know how long, but it's like when you feel like, things aren't working out, keep going because you never know when you're going to actually break through that ground and you're going to jut up to 90 feet tall. And that's kind of, I think what happened with me, you know, when I did the you know, first interview of Jack Canfield, that was absolutely amazing. So what happened for me is it, it elevated my mind to say, I got this. I can do this. I want to do more of this. I want to be actually on the red carpet as often as possible. Don't miss up any opportunities. Ask as many times as possible to get myself onto these red carpets. And it's happening because I'm asking, I'm putting myself out there. It's not like they're saying, hey, Linda, we want you to be on our red carpet. No, it doesn't happen that way. It's Linda says, hey, um, can I please be on the red carpet? And then next time I'm like, hey, I'm on your red carpet, which is what happened this time. I, I just messaged it. I said, put me on the red carpet. And they're like, okay. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's an interesting process that, you know, we go through for whatever it is. And when I started, when I started, I had no inclination to ever even imagine being on the red carpet, but it happened. And so that's the point, right? Is that we don't know. So just keep going. If you are loving what you're doing, which I do this because I absolutely love it. This is why I do it now. And if you love what you're doing and it's your passion, just keep doing it. it might be a passion project. It might never make you a dime. But if you're doing things you love, then you're spending your time in a wise manner, in my opinion, is like I want to spend my time having as much fun as possible, hanging out with positive and uplifting people who want to make a change on this planet. And if I can spend a lot of time doing that, then I'm spending my time wisely. That's my opinion on that. I, I, I agree with your opinion. I mean, there's, there's no I mean. Helping people is the best thing we can do because we gain knowledge over the years. We can share that knowledge with the wide world now using live video. And it's just brilliant to be able to go live and talk about a topic of your own choosing 
and to reach out to people and get a response. Yeah? Yes, and exactly. Of responses, hey, if... guess who's joining us? Ah. Brigetti. Uh, excellent. Here she comes. Boom. There she is. Hello. 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 How, how are you? Oh, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Thanks for joining I can, us. I can never resist. I, I can never resist to jump in, but you know, yes. I was busy making dinner and, and dinner could turn into burnt offerings if you don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I love that. Burnt offerings. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Which topic, because we've been talking about a bunch of different topics, which topic um, uh, thought you, you know, made you think I should join in? I, I was just listening to your last call, your last conversation now, you know, about um, about taking the gap and not waiting for people to invite you to actually make yourself available and say, you know, here I am. Don't pass up that opportunity. And I think, you know, um, for anyone wanting to get into live streaming, that's probably your best way of getting into it. Literally jump into it with both feet, mm -hmm. because if you hesitate, it's not going to happen. And um, and I like what you what you were saying about you know just go for the ask don't don't hesitate. I I did something um, crazy the other day. I asked someone, would you would you be my guest on the live stream? And he said, well, um, yeah, I, I'm free in 15, in ten minutes. And I'm like, okay, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> but wow. if the guy's available, let's run with it. <laughs> Yeah, as long as you have you time know, and you're available too, right? Why not? I mean, what do you, yeah, I might throw you for a loop, but but go for it anyway. Life is too short. I know. And I mean, today um, I was watching a, a Twitter chat. I was I was collecting my um, my ID card today. It's been overdue for collection and, and, and they're closing for two weeks. And I figured I better get, you know, I get it collected before they close for two weeks. And um I was sitting on Twitter while I was waiting for my turn and I saw a post from, you know, one of our local influencers here and I, I, I responded with kind of a cheeky tongue in cheek post that he made and I responded to that and it was about him being one of the uh, first people in South Africa to really embrace um, the web. Mm -hmm. You know, he was like a trailblazer. And he got interviewed on national TV um, for being one of the trailblazers on on the internet, and um, and I, I commented on his post. Um, in fact, his post his post said, "I'm addicted to the internet," and I responded and said, "You know, ha ha ha, you know, any cure in sight kind of thing? Are you, you know?" And um, and then I thought. He'd make a great guest on, on a show, you know. And I said to him, well, how about you being a guest on, on a live stream with me? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, well, how about tomorrow or do you need more lead time? And he says, no, there's not, no time like the present. Let's go for it. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey. I love it. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> but that's, that just illustrates, you know, never be scared to ask. I mean, what is the worst thing someone can say to you? They're not going to yeah. bite off your head. They're not going to laugh at you. The worst thing someone can say is no. That's the absolute worst. That's true. Yeah, and so I you... create, yeah, I created the ask method, A-S-K. A is assume the answer is always yes. Because if you go into it just assuming it's yes, then it's in your mind. It makes it a lot easier to go. And I can't remember what the S and K stand for. I got to look them up. <laughs> <laughs> But I agree with you. You know, that is so spot on. If you go for the ask with the expectation to get a yes, it likely is going to be yes. Because the thing is, people can sense where you're coming from. Yeah. And if that ask is coming from a genuine place, they're more likely to say yes. Or if you're confident about the ask, you know, it's like, do you think you'd like to be a guest? You All right. Very likely the person's going to say, Nada. Doesn't sound like you know what you're doing. That's it. You, <laughs> but you, you know, do. if you sound confident in the ask, it's going to make a difference to the answer you'll get. You need, do need to know why you're asking, and you need to be able to follow through on if they do say yes, don't they? Don't you? You've got to be ready to go. 
Absolutely. So, so be prepared for, for the answer, you know. Um, and even if the person did say no, it doesn't mean that that's a permanent no. Right. You know, go back in there and say, well, is it not a good time? Could we do it at a time when it's suitable for you? So don't always just accept that no means a permanent no. Yeah, I've heard no means not yet, you know, so you just, just keep yeah. pushing, you know. I don't know. As far as sales goes, I don't agree with that 100%. But because I know that there's some things like I'm just a no, I'm a, an absolute no on. But hey, when it comes to being on someone else's show, I'm always on. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, actually means not yet. So let's um, address a couple things here. We had um, RJ says that yesterday's show was off the hook. That was with Steven. And then um, he posted a link to your anchor.f slash Stephen ah. Healy. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you so much for posting that. And then um, we got, I'll be back on iTunes just a few days ago. And I, I'm really bad with names. So I, again, forgot Franco Franco's name. I'm so sorry. Jason. Thank Jason. I'm going to write a note so I don't forget this time. <laughs> it's gone quiet. And I, I is it, a, is, it is. It is. It is easy. You know, I'm. I'm. I'm one of those people also that, um, if I want to remember someone's name, I either have to repeat it or associate it with something, um, and and I find that you know repeating it in my head a few times really helps, and and then I've got it. And to address the person and say, "Hey, Jason, how are you today?" Because now I've said it. <laughs> You know, and that's a, there's a great point right there because my husband has a name association game that he, he plays. And I know other people who have, you know, name association games that they play and, or different techniques. And, and I have not found my technique yet. <laughs> so I keep searching for it. You know, it's because uh, I've tried the thing where they say, when you meet somebody, you say their name at the beginning, you say it in the middle, and then you say it at the, you know towards the end, and keep reminding yeah. yourself. And I can't even get to the first time and remember. So I don't know what it. I don't know what it is. I you know. I've started that. I, you know that that technique of of using their name, and um, and and what I've learned to do is to not be afraid of saying I have forgotten. Yes. You know, I'll kind of just say, listen, I'm having a blonde moment. What's your name again? Yeah. And I'll go, oh, you know, and then I'll make a point of in quick succession repeating the name again so that it really gets stuck in my head. If you're hosting a show, it's a lot easier because if you get guests coming on the show and you forget the name, then you can just press the button where you can see it on the screen. That helps a lot. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Yes. So, and we, we knew Franco Franco before he became Franco Franco. So, We've always oh, okay. known him as Jason. We've always okay, known him so that Jason. makes it easier shift, right? Because like I just want to call him Franco Franco because it's right there. It's right yeah. there. Yeah, so no. He's I probably know. cracking up, you know, like what, <laughs> what the heck's up with that, Linda? So Cheryl, Cheryl Piper Snyder says, I love the conversation today. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Yeah. You know, we're just kind of like, a, you know, off. we don't have an agenda. Like we just literally, we come on and we just do it. Like we're literally just doing this show with, no plan of action ahead of time. Like, you know how Stephen was talking about his podcast. Like he says, okay, I, he lists different things that he's going to talk about. So he has an agenda there. We don't have an agenda for this show, which I think, which for me is kind of fun because we don't know where it's going to go. You know, we'll just take it wherever it goes. And that means we're just thinking and conversation yeah. is happening from the thoughts, which I love because I'm totally into that. Well, it, it makes it free flowing because you can go from one topic to another and segue and the theme is the same. The theme is just do it, mm -hmm. uh, which brings my to my question to Rigetti. Do you actually plan everything or not? You know, I have not been too much of a planner, but I've now realized that some planning is good. You have to have mm -hmm. a baseline. Um, one thing I've started, for example, is my intro. There's certain things that I do want to say in my intro. And when I'm winging it, um, I'll forget to say something. For example, one of the things I've learned from Mitch Jackson was um, to start your show with a disclaimer, to say, um, are you speaking in your personal capacity or are you speaking in your business capacity? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that... 
people understand the difference, especially if you if you're giving advice to people. So they need to know is that advice coming from you personally or is it business advice? And um, so he says, you know, try and weave it in very casually. You don't have to make a big uh, thing about it. Just be casual, but be clear. And um, I've been trying to weave that in. And every time after I've started my, you know, a show, I think, you know, I forgot again. And so what I've done now is I have, um, I've actually written it down as a note to myself so that I have it in front of me and I actually can't forget. But the other thing I've started doing differently now is with my internet connection being what it is, it's not always stable. And I've done a couple of shows now and I'm finding the ones that are more problematic than others is when you're doing a very short show. You know, say you're doing for something under 10 minutes. It's just really short, impactful. If you're doing a longer show and something goes wrong with your internet and you've got a guest, you can, you know, it's easy to to, to get it going and revive it and carry on. But if it's something short and you're not even aware that it's actually broadcasting, um, that show is wasted, it's gone, it's lost. So what I've done now is I have actually created a show card that I've put on screen. Mm -hmm. And I've got my introduction that I've got written down. And I will read my introduction. Obviously, you don't want to sound as if you're reading it. You want to be animated and make it sound, you know, conversational. Um, but I'll do that while my show card is on screen. And that gives me just enough time to have a look at my page and check that I'm actually broadcasting before I go on screen so that while I'm looking um, at my page, I'm not looking away and looking distracted. Yeah. You, and then when I appear on screen, I know I'm live and I can now focus on talking to the audience. Well, two, two things there. One, you can see that you're live. The other thing is you can see if you can be heard. Because occasionally, and I, you'll see as many, you actually go live and the sound's not there for whatever reason. And uh, making sure you're actually live is always a good idea. It's a habit I've got into and I always do. The other habit I'd like to get into, which I keep forgetting too at the beginning of the show, uh, is to say welcome to the replay. Because we know that 70% of the people watching a show, because 70% of the people watching the show will watch the replay on the live. So if you say welcome to the replay and explain a bit about what the show is about, then people actually catching the replay will be engaged in the first minute or so and make us stop a, a little bit longer to actually watch the show. Uh, and that, that's a tip I picked up from uh, Joelcom. And uh, he does it consistently. That is, a, that is a great tip. And I've actually weaved that into my repertoire um, as well, because it does make, I mean, most of the show, generally your broadcasts um, is watched on the replay, not live. So that's a great point to mm -hmm. make your replay viewers feel welcome. I feel like I have about 99% of my viewers are replay viewers. <laughs> it's it's uh, definitely a higher percentage. But yeah, I fail to do the same thing as well. Like you're talking about, Brigetti, is you know coming up with my introducing myself in a certain way or or what have you. And then also, uh, I don't address the replay viewers, but I do you know ask them to comment if they are watching the replay. Mm. And so I don't know if that's the same or not, but there's so many techniques that we can use. Here's the point though, is you gotta just do it. You gotta put yourself out there True. and you, do these live videos, you know? And you've got to just do it your own way. Yeah, exactly. Cause it's, it, it, there's a lot of, um, un, like they're not, mandatory rules. But I think what happens a lot of times is people get so stuck in the, um, do I need, but they're saying, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do this. I need to do that. The reality is that you don't need to do any of that. You need to just get yourself out there, especially if you're scared, like if you're scared to do live video, and then all of a sudden you think there's all these certain rules that you have to follow, that's just going to make it even more scary. So you know, when I first did my first live video was the first day they came out. And by then I had already done 2000 videos. So I was used to doing video, but when I did my very first videos, I was scared to do it, but I did it because, you know, I made a promise to somebody to do it, but I talked about totally random, random stuff 
for about two years you know, before I started talking about something that have value because I was doing it because somebody asked me to do it every day. I'm not recommending that to anybody. But what I am recommending is that you take that first step, you turn on that live button and you talk to people because there is somebody who wants to hear what you have to say, somebody who needs to hear what you have to say. And if you're being silent, they're not hearing it. So you're actually being a little bit selfish by not sharing you with the world. We're here placed on this planet to make a difference. And we can make a difference in our own little community. But just think of the bigger difference you can make by sharing yourself with the rest of the world. So there's my soapbox. I totally agree with you, Lee. <laughs> I, I agree with you because, you know, by going live um, and getting yourself known, you're basically saying, hey, I'm open for business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because how often do you hear people saying, you know, they needed a service, X, Y, Z, and they've gone to someone else. And then when you tell them, well, I do X, Y, Z, and they say, well, why didn't you tell me? Mm -hmm. Well, it's your fault. You didn't tell people that you're open for business. And what better way is there than using live video to get yourself out there and say, hey, I'm open for business. And it doesn't mean that you're going to go on air selling all the time. Just be visible, you know, um, provide value to people. And yes. so that when they need your service, you're going to be on the top of their mind because they see you out there and they've had a chance to get to know who you are. Exactly. I totally agree with you on that. Now we're getting to our last couple of minutes here. Mm -hmm. So Stephen, how did you want to? I've got to jump off because okay. I need to go and finish my dinner. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You don't want any burnt offerings. <laughs> no. <laughs> Take care, Professor. See you soon. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for joining. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, so, Stephen, how did you want to um, end the show today? I, th I think the message uh, that we want, I want to send out today, is if you've got an idea, uh, don't think about it for too long. Just go out there and do it. Um, if it doesn't work the first time, just try again. If the idea works, you're on your way. If it doesn't, then wait till the next idea comes along. And it's basically by experimenting and trying out ideas, some of which work, some of which don't, uh, that we actually grow and uh, get to know what we're capable of. Yeah, Thomas Edison tried 10,000 times you know, to get it right. And he said, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I just found 10,000 ways that didn't work. Indeed. Yes. So spend your time figuring out what works for you by figuring out what doesn't work for you. <laughs> it works the same way. All right. And there's a comment from Bob. So oh, Barb asked, how do you handle it when someone starts to comment on your live and they try to steal your joy in what you're saying, things that overrides what my point is? Oh, do you want to address that really quick before we head out? Right. Okay. Uh, the thing is that you're in, if it's your show, Bob, you're actually in control. Mm -hmm. And if you see a comment uh, that's made, which is contrary to what you're, what you're trying to do on the show, then just ignore it. And if you want to address it, go back afterwards and write a comment. One, you're not doing something in the heat of the moment. And two, nobody sees it. Nobody will see the comment that, 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 that you didn't want to be seen. That's a good point. And also, in addition to that, is um, your viewers who are your your fans will come to your rescue if if something like that is happening. So you can ignore it. Now, I, I will share that there was one that happened like that the other day uh, that I was my my thing was just ask or ask me anything like that was my topic. And I you know, the first time I ever did that. And I'm, you know, it was a risk, right? I don't know oh, what yeah. people are going to ask me. I don't know what they're going to say. And some gentleman, you know, commented something. First of all, he used the F word, which I do not use. And, and I addressed it and I said, just want to let you know that I don't use that word. I don't mind it when other people do, but I don't use it. So when I read your comment, I'm going to read everything except for that word. And then, um, and then I addressed his question his comment actually was contradictory to some of the things I think. And that was kind of cool for me because for me, I uh, don't like confrontation. And so I saw this as a confrontational kind of situation, but it, it gave me an opportunity to address it so that I could work through that fear 
that I have of confrontation. And I actually thanked him. I said, thank you so much for saying something in contradictory that's contradictory to what I'm talking about because you gave me the opportunity to be able to share a fear that I have and to work yeah. through it. So I thanked him and then he came at the very end. Like he was just like, you're so amazing. I really love what you're doing. You know, you're very yeah. authentic and vulnerable. And, and so I was able to turn that comment from this really like negative type of comment into something that was very a positive uh, situation. And then we ended up chatting offline, you know, so it's, it was really cool. So you can use that as an opportunity, or you can ignore it. So it's whatever you want to do. Like, you know, like Stephen said, it's your show. It's your show. You run it the way you want to run it. And, but don't let them get you heated. Don't let them take control of you, of who you are. Step into it as you know, who you are as a human being and be that person. Just don't let them take over because once you relinquish control of who you are, then you've lost it. You know, it's hard to get it back, especially when the emotion, don't let the emotion take over and just take and say, you know what, that's okay. And go on with your day. Don't let it control you. Yeah. Totally. So on that and note, I think we got to be done. It's like 10 01. I, I got an appointment yeah. at 10 o'clock. Okay. I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> to everybody who's watched, uh, thank you. And Linda, it's your show, your close. Oh, yes. Okay. So thank you, everybody, for attending, to, for watching live, and then also replay viewers. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys being here. And this is Linda West and Stephen Healy. We are out with Just Do It, and we'll see you next Thursday, same time, same bat channel. Brilliant. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.